back with a, another show coming at you, brothers. What's going on with y'all? I got a special guest on the show today. Uh, I'll let her introduce herself to you guys, and maybe she'll tell you about her channel. <laughs> Hi, my name is Kelly. How you doing? Um, I'm coming to you live from the Dominican Republic, a little beach town here, and uh, coming to talk to you about my life here, how I decided to move. I'm from California, but I've been living down here about a year and a half, going on two years, and so I'll share a little bit of my life with you today. Thanks for having so, me. So tell us, tell us what, your, what your channel is all about, and I'm going to post ah, a link to our channel. So my channel is called Free Island Girl, Free Island Girl. And it is really documenting the journey from me being in California, I'm from Oakland, um, to moving down here. And just what that was all like, you know, going from just sitting in my car, talking about I'm going to do this, and, you know, how to just let go, start letting go of stuff you have in your life, like you're just all the crap you have in your closets and everything, and what that's like. Some people are really afraid to let go. And then coming down here, I came with my son, and... Um, getting settled, finding a place to live, discovering what the vibe is like, what the culture's like. I talk about dating. I talk about um, what my work has been like, everything. So check it out, Free Island Girl. Subscribe and follow me, and you'll learn a lot about it. All right. Uh, I'm putting the link up. I got the link in the description, guys, for our channel. So whenever y'all get a chance, uh, go ahead and uh, subscribe to her page. Uh, she, she has a lot of videos over there, so check her out. Uh, she's California, California girl. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. What, what made you want to leave the beautiful state of California and go to the well, small island of Dominican Republic? I like being a big fish in a small pond. It's easier that way sometimes, you know? <laughs> and so, I mean, I was, not, I was not born in California. I was born in D.C., but I was raised in San Francisco and then in Oakland when I got a little older. And I mean, I've lived in California pretty much all my life. I traveled quite a bit. I've been to a lot of countries, um, studied abroad a little bit, um, a couple times, once when I was a teenager, well, twice when I was a teenager. And um, I just loved traveling. I got to, yeah, from the Bay, what's up? <laughs> I am from the Bay. Um, I got to, I got a taste of what it's like to travel early on. And I loved it. I loved it. There's a thing called the cotillion that a lot of girls do when they're like turning 18 or whatever, like being presented to society. And my mother was like, you can either do the cotillion or you can go to Costa Rica for two weeks. And I was like, I'm out. So I got a passport and that was the beginning of it. That was the beginning of it. And not to mention right now, you know, the U.S. is very expensive. The Bay Area is crazy expensive. There's a lot of stress there. A lot of people are talking about racism and the crazy stuff that Trump is doing. And I just didn't want to really hear about that all the time. I wanted to have a different life. So I switched it up. All right. So you say you went to Costa Rica. What, what made you chose the DR over Costa Rica? Um, well, Costa Rica was a student program at the time. And that's just where that happened to be um, located. And then I, I studied in Spain, uh, summer school in Spain when I was in college one summer. The DR actually wasn't even on my radar. Like, of course, I'd heard of it, but I had never come here before. But I was really interested in, in getting out of the country to live. I'd done these little trips here and there, but I wanted to live out of the country. So this was back in 2015, 2016, when Obama was in office and Cuba was open to visitors because of things he had done. And I was really interested in going to Cuba because I kept hearing great things about it. So I was doing some research online, and I ended up stumbling upon an organization that did um, study abroad programs, but also teach abroad programs. And they weren't in Cuba, but they were like in China and Argentina and Spain and all over the place. But they were for a year, a whole semester. And I'm a mom. I'm a single mom at the moment. And I didn't want to take my son away like to China for a year. That just didn't feel like the right thing to do. So the only program they had that was for the summer was the Dominican Republic. And I was like, well, I'm going to go kick it on an island for a summer. Like, how bad could that be? And so that's what we did. And that was my introduction to the country. It wasn't because I decided I wanted to come here in some other way. Okay. Was it, uh, what were the things that really drawed you to it? Because I saw when you said Dominican Republic, your eyes light up like, oh, yeah, Dominican Republic. <laughs> So what was well, the catch you know, people, to it? <laughs> yeah, you know, you, we've all heard the things that happen down here, what, it, what it's like. It is a beautiful country. It's full of beautiful people that look like you and me. 
and all shades in between, all kinds of just, it's a mix of cultures, really. And, um, and I had a lot of friends who've been here before on vacation, so I've heard a lot of good stuff about the country, but I didn't really know anything more than just like vacation stories. And um, I've been to the Caribbean a whole bunch, lots of different islands. And, you know, I always love the Caribbean. It's full of, of course, you know, beautiful beaches and again, beautiful people like us. And I thought, well, let me just go check it out. I knew the language is Spanish. I happen to speak Spanish. So I figured, yeah, you know, let me go be Dominican. I'm going to be a Dominicana. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So so yeah. how, how has life been over there so far? I mean... You have any? You had any issues over there when you first got there, or is it anything you want to tell people when moving abroad, especially uh, as a female? Any advice you can give people? Actually, I just did a video today on my channel about that, about some of the ups and downs of moving, and so yeah, there have been challenges. So, so the very first thing that happened was that I was communicating with a realtor I got in touch with um, through a Facebook group an online Facebook group in the little town where I live. And I thought I had an apartment reserved for me and my son. I'm like, okay, make sure, make sure, make sure, because I'm coming, I'm leaving my country, and I'm gonna be there on this day, and be sure. He's like, no problem, no problem. Of course, when we get here, the apartment's been rented. I'm like, what are we, what am I gonna do? He takes me to this other place, like an apartment hotel, but you can stay here. I did not like it. Ended up staying there for four months, four and a half months in a different, the, the unit they gave us, I didn't like, we found one that was nicer. So that's one thing right off the bat. you got to be flexible in terms of what your accommodations are. You know, you can find a nice place to live, but it may not be the very first place you find. And so I always tell people, leave your expectations at home. Um, be willing to be flexible. Understand that if you leave your country, you're going most likely to a very different culture. <laughs> I love you, too. You got a, you got a super fan. <laughs> <laughs> well, subscribe to my channel and check me out. <laughs> hey, I, I, hadn't, I hadn't seen nobody say, hey, I subscribed already. They hadn't hit. <laughs> Come on now. Y'all show her some love if y'all, if you really oh, love her. Well, thank you. I love it. I, love, I feel it. I appreciate it. We all need love. And so I appreciate that. So, but really, there are challenges just moving, just, you know, just getting used to a new flow, getting used to, like, the heat. We we're talking about it a minute ago. That it's very hot today. Yesterday was the heat index was like 107. Yesterday it was crazy hot all day. So you just have to get used to that. You know, even though these are black people, they're not American black people. And so there's just a different way of different flow of life. And you're absolutely going to have challenges. But I would say to anybody, and especially to women, yes, you can do it. Yes, you can do it as a single woman. You know, obviously, you're going to be careful about how you carry yourself. Like, I'll count your money in the streets. You're going to look out for which man you talk to. But really, people are friendly. I don't have any issues with people trying to bother me at all. In fact, they're they're more helpful than anything else. Okay. Um, yeah. So you felt like when you was coming there, the, uh, the person was maybe like running a scam on you as far as the place? Or No, I, I didn't think it was a scam. I just think he didn't do a good job of telling me exactly what I needed to do. Like he mentioned, okay, you're going to have to pay a deposit. And I was like, okay, fine. So I'm waiting on more information. I got my money ready. And he never says, okay, send it to this place or what have you. So I'm just waiting, waiting. Like, I guess I pay it when I get here. I didn't know. And when I got here, he's like, well, you never paid the deposit. And I was like, well, you didn't tell me what to do. I don't know. I'm, I'm new to this. He's like, well, someone else took the apartment. That's what happened. I was like, well, how do you not I'm, tell somebody what the steps are, you know? I'm glad you so. didn't pay that deposit. You might have never saw that deposit. <laughs> well, you know, I thought about that too because you can be, it can be a little bit make you nervous sending money like uh, online to someone you've never met and, you know, some hundreds of dollars or whatever. So it, it ended up actually working out fine. But, you know, at the moment, I, we get here, we've been traveling for hours all the way from California, tired. I got my son. It's just, hola. Um, but it was just, it was just, it was too much. And, and, and like I said, we ended up in a nice place. But we stayed, there was a studio apartment though, me and my boy, for a four and a half months, sleeping in the same bed, in the same room, and we just had to suck it up. And then when I could figure it out and work out, you know, the next move, that's what I did. But here's the deal. I live in a beach town. It's not like Punta Cana. It's not big and touristy with all kinds of resorts. It's real low key, which I like a lot. Most Americans do not know about this place. Um, but it was high season, right? It was high season. So like from December to roughly April is high season when everyone's trying to escape the cold and everything. 
we moved here in February, right? It'll be two years in February. And so it was the middle of high season. So like all the good places are taken, the prices are jacked way up. So that's why I had to wait for four months to be able to move to another place. So again, you just have to roll with it, you know, but it was okay. I, I learned that where we lived was right in the center of town. I was able to walk to lots of places, find out what was happening in town. So, you know, if you keep an open mind and stay positive, it's going to be all right. If you stress and everything's a problem, then good luck. <laughs> all right. All right. So you never, you never had like problems with, uh, do you drive down there and stuff or what? Or you you just can afraid? drive. You can drive down here. I actually bought a scooter. They call them pasolas here. I bought a scooter before summer. I was gone for a couple months during summer, and I bought one just before I left because that's what everyone drives, like, motorbikes down here, and they're zipping all around the town. And I thought, all right, well, that'll be cool. That's uh, easy to get around. doesn't cost much. not much gas. But I, I never felt comfortable on the whole balance thing. And mine was a big, heavy one. It was a good one, but it was just – it made me feel nervous. I ended up crashing. And so I show on my channel, see my, my scar right there. I got a scar. When I was here in 2017, I tried to rent one. I was like, I'm going to go check out some houses with a realtor. Crashed that one right away. Ended up in the emergency room. So I was like, okay, no, this is not for me. So now I'm trying to buy a car. So you want to make a donation on my page? I got a PayPal link. This sister needs a car. You want me to you know, stay together, be looking good, feeling good, be healthy? That's what's next. I got to get a car. Y'all, y'all gotta subscribe to her page and uh share it so she can start getting some monetization on her channel. Uh, she got some good videos out, good content. So y'all, y'all help a sister out. You know she living abroad all alone. So uh, tell us what kind of uh, what kind of work? How you surviving out there? How, how can you survive out there? So everybody should know that if you decide to come here to live or what have you, it's gonna be very different from what you are doing at home. Even if you work online, like a lot of people have online businesses, but it's different. So if you make, let's just say you make $50,000 in the US, you can figure you're probably gonna make 20,000 here because although the cost of living is very low, you, that means you also don't get paid a whole lot. So I teach English, I teach English to businesses here, and that doesn't pay me very much money. It's like less than $20 an hour, maybe like 12 bucks an hour. So it's not very much money, but I do because I like it and I get to meet a lot of people. I'm also a lawyer, um, licensed in California. I'm also licensed in Georgia and Maryland, but anyway. But how I can't practice law from here, right? I do work online with clients from home, but it's not regular, regular, regular. So you have to be creative. And so I'll tell you right now, one of the things I'm working on is providing a service to people who are interested in coming to live in the Dominican Republic, whether it's full-time or like for retirement or splitting their time between here and someplace else, to offer services like you asked me about driving. <clears throat> and so can you get a driver's license here? Yes, you can. How do you do it? My services would include like teaching you that, how to find apartments so you wouldn't end up like me in some wrong place, you know, <clears throat> um, health insurance. <clears throat> pardon me, all those kinds of things. So I put a package together, depending upon what your needs are, if you're, if you're looking at retirement, if you have kids, any of those kinds of things. Um, that's what I would offer. So you got to be creative here. You definitely have to be creative. So you're setting up a whole package. So if somebody wanted to move over there, you can go ahead, make it real easy for them, and they can just pretty much hit you up and you just ride with them and take them everywhere. You, you're exactly. doing the whole nine? Exactly. <laughs> you going to yeah. translate for them, too? <laughs> exactly. Yo puedo hacerlo. Y si no yo, yo tengo amigos que puedo hacerlo también. Entonces, no hay problema. All right? I got you. <laughs> uh, no, yeah, seriously, she... because I went through, like I said, I've been here a little over a year and a half, and I've been through all of the challenges of, like, well, how do I do this? What do I do that? How do I open a bank account? And, oh, I didn't bring my passport today, so now I can't exchange money. And just, like, all that stuff is a headache. But if you have somebody who knows how to do it, who's coming from the States or someplace and who's been through this, it makes it so much easier. I have a family who actually moved here right now. Um, they moved here, I don't know if it's been quite a month, from California. They knew me in California and they said they were watching videos and you know liked so much what they saw. We're moving too. And I've been helping her to get through. This is a woman who is married with her father and kids and the whole bit. But even with all that support, it's still tough for them to try to navigate. So what I'm talking about is offering someone a package that, you know, helps you know, here's a, a reputable realtor. Here's where you can go open a bank account and how to do it. Here's what you need to, if you're talking about residency, if you need someone to go with you to the office, 
I can get someone to go with you who can translate for you in Spanish. I don't know that I can do every one of those, but my point is I can absolutely help people get that done. So, yeah. So yeah. being that you was a lawyer in the States, that's like a high position, high paying uh, job and you, you left all of that? It depends on what you do, right? I work for myself and yeah. um, I, work, I work in television and film. And I have a particular client right now. It's a television production company in Los Angeles. And you're in Atlanta. You know the, the station Bounce? Yeah, you guys yeah, yeah. With Bounce? yeah. Okay, so we, have, we have shows on Bounce too. If you watch Bounce, or if you don't have Bounce in your area, you can go online and look at bouncetv.com. Our two shows are on the air right now. are called Family Time of Mark Gooding. And the other one is In the Cut with Kalita Smith, who used to be the wife on the Bernie Mac show. And so those are our shows. So yeah, I, I do the production agreements for them. I do the talent agreements. I do all that stuff. My name ought to be in the credits. I got to make sure I check on some people. <laughs> but here's how it works. It sounds glamorous and wonderful, and it's really fun. But if they're not in production, I don't get a paycheck, right? And we're not in production like many months out of the year. So this sister has to hustle. It sounds really good. And sure, some lawyers who do certain kinds of work can make a lot of money. I'm on my own. I don't want to have to go exactly California bar. I mean, I, you know, I've done all the work. I have a master's degree in law, mm. but I mean, that doesn't mean that money just starts coming in. In fact, I'll tell you this real quick. Um, got my first law degree a long time ago, 1995. And then I went back to law school to get a second law degree. And I graduated in 2014 from Berkeley law degree, master's in international law. And I was like, I'm good. I'm golden. I'm about to get all the money and all these offers. Can I tell you? Like nothing. It was crazy in the San Francisco Bay Area because it's just so competitive, I guess. So competitive. I don't know what the reason was. I can't figure it out. And I was like, well, I guess I got to do my own thing. And anybody who started their own business or themselves knows you put a lot of time and a lot of effort in before you start seeing those dollar signs. And so um, I decided to come and have a different kind of life. I don't want to be stressed out worrying about money all the time. I'd rather just enjoy my life and not have to think about every single dollar I make. And when I live here, I can do that. That's good. That's good, man. Because, I mean, a lot of people now, man, I mean, a lot of people got degrees and stuff like that. So I tell people now, you got to really teach your kids, like, entrepreneurship and stuff like that and getting your own exactly. business type deals versus yeah. um, spending, like, a thousand years in school. And, right. I mean, there's so many people in colleges. There's so many online classes. It's so many now, so you really got to be a little different, you know. Yeah, I mean, the education is great. I, I always say education is great, but it is not everything. And having a bunch of degrees doesn't really guarantee you anything. Doesn't make you any better than anybody else. Doesn't necessarily make you any more qualified than anybody else. There's a lot of stories out there of people who either dropped out of school or never had the opportunity to go to school, but they made themselves into something amazing. They created a business. They, you know, do services for people, what have you. And so that's really what it's about. I, I don't mention my degrees to sound like, hey, I'm all that. I'm just saying that even with all that, I still have to hustle. So the system is broken, y'all. You know what the deal is, right? They tell you, go do this, you got whatever, you're going to be great and everything. And I'm like, well, I'm not having a bad life, but it's not what I was promised, that's for sure. So. Okay, okay. Did you have, um, I know a lot of the brothers, um, including myself, just had a lot of bad luck dating in America. Can you yeah. uh, elaborate on that? Did you have any issues in America that made you want to leave also as far as in the dating department? <laughs> I, yeah, I can, I can comment on that, definitely. I've gotten comfortable. I'm going to come back and tell you all about it. So um, here's what I've noticed, right? I'll just give you, give you a little bit of the bottom line. I've heard a lot of black men in particular complain about black women in the US and they say that black women have attitude and they don't support their brothers and they're always giving them some kind of grief and it's just hard to get through to them and that's why they might date a white woman or an Asian woman or a Latina, what have you. Or Dominican. And, or Dominican, <laughs> a Dominican. Cause they say those women, you know, don't talk back like that and they're catering to them more. And honestly, I have to say, I kind of understand that. I kind of understand what they're talking about because I do see that. And what I have discovered, like here, Dominican women are absolutely much more kind of submissive. Now, that doesn't mean they're weak or that they, they're doormats, not at all. But they do cater to their men. Absolutely. They're going to cook for them. 
They're going to make sure you are taken care of in the bed. They're going to make sure that, you know, the house is looking good, all that kind of stuff. That doesn't mean the couples here don't have problems. There is a, a pretty high divorce rate and they have an issue actually with domestic violence here. So that's another story. But while it's good, it's going to be real good. Um, what I have come to learn um, is that women, a lot of women in the U.S., or I guess anywhere in the world, especially women who are like career women or who or maybe who are single mothers or something who have to do things for themselves, they operate a lot out of masculine energy. They're doing stuff. They're like pushing boundaries. They're, you know, kind of like, there's, they can just, there's a hardness, right? Even if they're feminine looking, they can be kind of hard. And I think what I would say to women, I don't know if you have a lot of women who watch your channel, but if any of you brothers, you guys start learning about feminine energy and maybe you can share that with your women. Women are meant to receive, to lean back and to receive and let men take the lead and let men do certain things. It doesn't mean that we don't have a voice. It doesn't mean that we don't know how to use our feminine energy to create openings and to help men, you know, give us the things that we want. I don't mean materially. I mean like helping us feel good, to have a, a satisfactory relationship but there's definitely something to feminine energy that a lot of women just don't know about. We're too busy trying to tell the man this and tell the man that, and that's why, and that's why, and then <laughs> the problem. Seriously. Okay. And so, yeah, I think there's something to women, a lot of American, black women, white women too, but I'm talking about sisters now, would do well to investigate what feminine energy is about and to start you know, using that with men and see what happens in your relationships. All right, so if you could give these guys any advice on dating in America or abroad, what would be a few things like you would tell them to maybe try to do different um, mm. with the women? I mean, coming from your perspective, you know, you're a woman, so I hey. Wow, giving a guy advice. Let me see. I mean, like, when, 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 when guys used to approach you or that, when they used to date you, what was one of the worst things they did? Like, how can we, us as fellas improve ourselves? in the dating department. Well, let me just say that women like sincerity, right? We want to feel loved. We want to feel respected, just like you guys do. And we want to feel that you mean what you say. So all that, like, you look good, all the just lines, that we don't want to hear that. I mean, most women are not going to be moved by that kind of stuff. We like it if you are honest. If you are in a relationship, you need to say that, okay? And give the woman a choice as to what she wants to do. If you're dating various people, if you're married, you need to say, well, you know, I'm married. And there are some women who will date married men, you know, but at least give them a choice. And I'm not advocating that. Let's be clear. I'm not saying that's what you need to do. But if you're doing that kind of thing, if you're lying to women, you know, the truth's going to come out. Or if it doesn't, you're going to have some problems. So I advocate being respectful, right? Honesty is respectful. And, and give women a chance to decide how they want to deal with you. Other than that, um, you know, nobody wants to be pursued for sex. If a woman wants to have sex with you, you'll know, you know, there's that whole like three, 10 date rule in three months or whatever. Some women are going to do all that. Some women are not. And so you'll know, but I would say, even if you want that, like that's typically what the bottom line is like the goal, right? A lot of men, be cool. Be cool. Be cool. Come the on, cooling are the more you're starting the men bash now. Oh man, come on. <laughs> this ain't the men bash station. See, I done gave you a leash. Now you getting on all the fellas. But no, I think no, a lot no, a lot of guys, they do, they do want, you know, they at the of end course. of the day, if they take you out on a hundred dollar date, you know, most guys, yeah, they looking to do something. But I, I be telling guys, man, don't spend a hundred dollars on the first date. Take it to a coffee shop and get the know her. You know, um, you see, Amanda, how do you feel I about mean, a man going Dutch on a date with no. you? I mean, let me just say this. <laughs> I mean, I guess I already said it. Like, I'm not. Then, look, to that being said, I have offered to pay, and men have said, most men will say, no, no, I got it, right? I have paid, but if you're trying to be the man, then be the man. And that doesn't mean that you have to spend a whole lot of money. I agree with you. You don't need That's to spend $100. Or whatever you can go we can go get a coffee get an ice cream and go sit in the park and talk and we might have a better date than if you spend all this money and we go to some restaurant and i don't really like you and now i gotta sit through two hours of this dinner and suck it up and be like oh i'm definitely not kissing him but if we have fun we're sitting on the park bench 
and you're just cool and you're definitely not trying to push up really, really hard, there might be a vibe that comes naturally anyway. You don't have to spend a lot of money, you know, to make a woman like you. That's not what we like. Do women want to have men with money? Sure. Don't you want to have, you don't want to be broke, right? Everybody likes money. There's nothing wrong with that. But yeah. that's not what really is going to, unless you're just dating someone who's purely in it for money. I'm not talking about them. I'm not, it's like chicken head girls. I'm not, I'm talking about a real woman who had something to offer you, right? You don't want her after you just for your money. She doesn't want to be bothered with you just because you want sex. Everybody wants to have sex. Everybody wants to have money. Find a way, a middle ground to figure out how you can get that. All right. How's that? That's true, man. I tell guys all the time, if you got a sister, everybody either have a mother or had one, you wouldn't want your mother dating somebody that's broke and never helped them. Or never, you know, so, but it's the same way for me with a woman. I don't want to date a broke woman either, you know. Right. So, right. hey. So, speaking of dating, how, how is the dating going for you in, uh, in the <laughs> DR? Or, or are you dating in the DR? I have dated. Yes, I have dated here. I don't kiss and tell, but I can tell you that I have dated. Uh, come how, would on. I how, would I, how would that look? How would that look? I can't do that. Oh, no, we don't want details. We just want to know, you know, uh, how's it going for you out there? Is that it's one of the right. things that attracted you to DR? Was the man or what? Well, I had heard that the men were beautiful, and they are. There's a lot of beautiful men. But there's, listen, I like I like men, period. There's just beautiful men all over the world. So you don't have to come just to the DR. There's beautiful women all over the world, right? And not just black women. I mean, there's women are beautiful, right? And so there's a lot of good-looking men. Um, I will say that one of the things I noticed here is that men and women tend to get together very, very young, like in their 20s, um, whether they're getting married or having babies. Like right out the gate, they are starting families. And so a lot of times people come down here and they're like, well, I'm going to get a woman, I'm going to get a man. And you can, but you need to understand that a lot of times these people have children, they may have a spouse, whether they tell you or they do or not, they may have a spouse, they might have a significant other, and sometimes they'll even date you, although they have a significant other, just because they want to benefit from whatever it is they think you have to offer, right? And I'm talking mainly about people, and it goes both ways, it's not just women or men, well, it's women and men who will maybe want to date an American because they feel like we have more money than they do, or you're going to take them to nice restaurants or what have you. And they'll take that money home, give it to their family, give it to their man and their woman, and they'll use it like that. So you do have to be careful. Not everyone is like that, but that happens a lot. All right. All right. Let me give a shout out to uh, Hindu Hawk. Appreciate the uh, super chat. Uh, guys, if you send a super chat, uh, throw a question in there or a comment. I appreciate the support. Um, so you've been down there over a year or so. Uh, do you see a lot of women that travel down there, like just to be with the men? Like, I guess like a kind of like a sugar mama stuff like yeah. that. Do you see that often? Uh, mainly, yes, and I do see that. I notice it mainly. It's white or European type women that come down here. They tend to be older, and they like these young black boys. You know what it is. They they like what what is being offered, <laughs> and um, sometimes they're like much older than the guys. Like you might have a woman who's sixty or so, and you know a lot of times they look really wrinkled. They're not necessarily attractive, and they'll be with a guy that might be in his twenties, maybe in his thirties. I don't know. Um, and you know the guy's just getting what he's going to get out of it. I know of a story. I talked about this on my channel too. I know of a story of a woman, a French woman, in her sixties. And she was coming down here, coming down here, like spending a few months and going back to France, spending a few months, going back to France. And she hooked up with this guy who was in his 20s. And they eventually got married. I think like after three years, they finally got married. Well, I know someone who knows him. And basically the deal is that he married her because he wants to get out of here and go to France, right? Apparently his, I think his father may be French or something. And so, but his father's like nothing to do with him. He's the product of one of those, like of the French guy who came and slept with the Dominican girl, got her pregnant, and then bounced and never looked back. And he's the baby, right? Now he's grown up, but he wants to be able to go to France and have a shot at a better life. So he's going to marry, or he did marry this French woman, you know, and she got to know what it is, right? And so he's hoping now to get to go to France. And then when he goes, I don't know, you know, but in the meantime, she's provided an apartment and I guess some money or something, a nice standard of life for him. And he provides, you know, what he provides, some some good love, and that she's probably not getting in France. Something a little different, 
<laughs> yeah. And uh, so that happens frequently, for sure, for sure. And then there's like vacation people who just come, they want to have fun, so. I don't think nothing's wrong with that, man. I mean, I think if a woman, if that's what she want to do, if she want to use her money as a tool, hey, you know, she made it, and she can spend it how she want to spend it. <laughs> well, and I feel, and I don't really disagree with you because I feel like they're both adults. I mean, he's not 16, right? He has some experience. And down here, these men have a lot of experience with women. Dominican men have a, a reputation for being great lovers and for really knowing how to, you know, smooth over, being smooth with women. And so, you know, it's, it's not hard for them to get women, whether they're Dominican women or foreign women. But I'm not mad at him. And I'm, I see that question. <laughs> I wasn't going to throw that question, question up. I wasn't I don't want to that. She don't kiss That's her girl. An <laughs> but I'm not mad at people because everybody's getting something out of that um, that arrangement. And so, you know, if that's what works for you, then hey, do your thing. But but I, what I say about dating down here is that everybody needs to go into it with their eyes open. If you're dating someone who's much older or much younger or who has a partner, be clear. Now, not everybody is hooked up. There are single people, but just manage your expectations and be clear about what you're getting yourself into. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So you, you you mentioned you have a kid. Do your son know Spanish or how is that working out? He does. Yeah. So I, because I knew I wanted to live outside of the country, I didn't know, like I said, I didn't know I was coming here, but I wanted to, I wanted to go someplace. And I saw when I got back, I had lived outside of California for a while. My son was born in Atlanta, actually. We moved back to California and I put him in a Spanish immersion school. So all they spoke was Spanish. Yes, exactly. In the dirty South. Uh, I, I was there for I was there for a little bit, and I went back to Cali, and I put him in a school so he could learn to speak Spanish. And after he was there for about five years, I was like, "Okay, we're good. Now we can go." So he speaks Spanish, mm. and uh, it looks like a Dominican boy. So he's playing baseball now with the, the kids on the one of the teams down here. So yeah, he's doing all right. It's good. So do you get mistaken to be a Dominican lady a lot? Every or? day. Every day. Really? Yep. <laughs> so y'all blend in good, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they, they always are like, you know, what do you mean? You know, and they hear me speak Spanish. My Spanish is a little different from theirs, of course. But they're like, well, what about your grandmother or somebody? I'm like, you know, not that I know of, but you know, it's all roots and branches, right? It's like different, different boat, different something. So we all cousins anyway. <laughs> That's what's up. That's yeah. what's up. Um and I had a question on my head and just slipped right on out. Okay, but uh, how how long you think uh, you plan on uh, living in the Dominican Republic? Is this a permanent thing the rest of your life? Just get married, I get and be happy, and just that's it. <laughs> I mean, it depends. it depends on what happens. Yeah, I mean, if somebody sweeps me off my feet and is like, "We're gonna stay here forever," well, you know, maybe. I don't think so. That's not my plan to stay here forever. When I left the U.S., I was thinking about three to five years. And it's coming up on two, like I said. So I don't know. I have to see what's next. You know, maybe a job opportunity, maybe a, a personal opportunity. You know, I'm not sure, but I'm open. And I like the idea that I can be open and consider whether I want to go to another country or like be in the U.S. part time, DR part time. I don't know. I'm flexible with it. So, nice what, what, that. so what's some of the worst things you deal with out there? Like what, what's one thing you like, man, damn. Why am I, why, what the hell? <laughs> uh, inefficiency, inefficiency. You've got to realize this is not US. Um, you're going to be waiting for customer service sometimes. You want something to get fixed. It's not going to be fixed like, you know, you expect it. Like, go, well, be careful, for example, with cars. I don't have a car yet, like I said. But you take your car to a mechanic. I've heard, I know a man who owns a BMW, uh, like one of those SUVs, X5 or whatever it is. And he said, when he brought it down here, you know, he took it to whoever mechanic to get him to do maintenance or stuff. And he didn't realize it. But after a few times going back, they were stealing his parts and taking them to do whatever else and replacing them with some crap. So now it looks like a BMW, but under the hood, it's not a BMW. So you have to be careful. <laughs> things like that. You're right. Um, you got to be patient. You know, things take a lot longer here. We're definitely on island time. Nobody's in a rush. It's hot, y'all, you know, so we're not rushing around. Um, but the flip side of any of that kind of stuff is that you get a life where you are just not stressed out. 
you know, you're going to be surrounded by some beautiful people. The music is beautiful. The food is fresh and delicious. It's not full of hormones. And so you just, you know, slow down and get into a different flow. And, you know, I like it. You know, you, you're not going to make as much money, like I said, but you're also not going to be paying crazy money to live. So. Okay. So do you feel like your health improved since you've been there? Because I hear a lot of people say, oh, man, I feel a lot healthier, man. The food is this and that. A hundred percent. Yes. Really? You can go to my videos. You can look on my on my channel. Go way back to, like, I think we left in this. I started doing videos in December, like, 2017 or something. Well, first of all, my hair was much shorter. I, I had really long hair, and then I cut it all off, so it was short. And it was dark. I've gotten my hair colored since I've been here. Um, but I just looked, I think I looked more stressed out. I've definitely lost weight. Not that I'm even trying to. I still eat ice cream sometimes or junk food sometimes. But the food is so fresh that that's really what your diet is going to consist of. If I eat, people eat a lot of pork here. Like, you do not want to be a pig in this country. I'm not a big pork eater. But even if I do eat <laughs> pork sometimes, no, you don't. You don't want to be a pig or a chicken here because you will get eaten. But even if you eat pork, it's not, it hasn't been on some farm where they're injecting it and the chickens aren't injected. They're like little, they're skinnier chickens, but it's a real chicken and it ta it has flavor, you know? And so like now, just the other day I had, um, I have a moto driver, like the guys who drive these little motos and I will call them like, Hey, will you bring me something up to my house? So he brought me a couple of mangoes because I had a taste for mangoes. And that was my sweet instead of going and getting like chocolate or some cookies or some stuff like that that I might do otherwise. I ate a mango. Can I tell you, it was like butter, so sweet and juicy. And so you start eating like that, and naturally your body's going to change. Naturally, I've heard people tell me that they are not taking like high blood pressure medication anymore after living here for a while. So definitely your health will improve. Yeah, I heard I heard that from uh, a few people about the high blood pressure thing. But I mean, that can can be done here. I mean, you drink more water and. Lay off the fried foods and exercise a little more. I'm sure you do a lot more walking out there, right? I do. I do. And I started taking dance lessons. I'm learning salsa. I go, here's a, one of the upsides too, is that I, I joined a gym down here and now I can afford a trainer two or three days a week, right? So I get a training package of 12 classes and I think it costs like $84 for all 12 classes, which is like unheard of in the US. And so I get to work out. 84 classes? No, no. 80 the equivalent of eighty-four dollars oh. for 12, 12, 12 one hour sessions. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's probably I don't know if you can get one hour session. session in America. Exactly, exactly. So so yeah, I'm gonna be healthy. I am healthier. Um, I walk a lot more, I swim a lot because because I can, you know, and it's hot. So yeah, it's good. All right. Did you um being a single traveler, did, did you have like a lot of kickback from family? Like, oh, don't move there. There's problems and stuff like that. Or your, your family was real supportive of that? My family is very supportive. They know me and they know that I like to travel and that I've always wanted to live outside of the country. So they weren't really surprised to hear this. I've been talking about making a move for a while. Um, some of my friends were like, what are you doing? Or people that I knew like in my community thought, hmm, she might be a little crazy. Uh, not crazy, crazy, but you know what I mean? Like, that doesn't sound like a good idea. When I sold my car, they were like, what? Why don't you keep it for a while just in case? Yes, I have health insurance. I'll tell you about that in a second. Um, <laughs> they want so, you yeah, to come some, back. <laughs> some people thought, whatever. But you know what? When I went home this summer for a visit, everyone was like, oh, my God, you did it. You know, you, you escape the matrix. I want to do what you're doing. How did you get out? Like, everybody now wants to do this. You're living the dream. You're living in paradise. I'm like, well, you know, I told you. I told you. Did, so did they use that terminology, uh, escape the matrix? Because I thought that no, was no, like no. only a traveling thing. It's American people that I hear say that about getting out of the U.S. and all that, you know, being trapped with, like, being on the treadmill of having to go to work all the time and pay bills. And as soon as you pay this, and that's due. And cost of living is crazy and the stress and the traffic and the relationships are tough, uh, you know, all of that. I don't deal with uh, none you, of that. You got a question here and you got a question there. You probably can answer those in the same. <laughs> yes. 
So my well, health insurance. Yes, I do have health insurance. I have comprehensive health insurance. I bought everything. I bought like the death package in case something happens to me. Like I can be my ashes or whatever it is. That's all covered. The air ambulance is covered because we live in a little town. So it'll take 20 minutes for the helicopter to get me to the city to like a big hospital. Um, great package. I think I'm paying, I think I'm paying like $1,000 for the whole year. Just so you know. Um, to find an apartment here. Well, you can do things. The town I live, so there's like Remax where I live and Century 21. They can help people find apartments sometimes. But those are more for like house rentals, like long-term rentals and purchases. Um, sometimes on Facebook, oh, in fact, here's what you can do. There's a, there's a website called, um, oh my gosh, why am I blanking now? I have to look for it. Anyway, it's like expats in the DR or expats.com. Try that, E-X-P-A-T-S, right? Expats.com. Um, there's also like international living as a website you can go to. And sometimes they'll have resources there about, um, about how to find an apartment, things like that. I wish I could think of the website. I'm, I'm trying to remember though, because I still get emails from them. They have all kinds of questions about, um, you know, veterinarians or where, where do I get my car fixed or what's it like dating? And, you know, if I marry somebody, you know, how does that work? Okay. So, yeah. so what, what city do you live in again? I live in Las Terrenas. Las then, Terrenas. Is that close to the Santo Domingo? And how did you pick that town? It's about two and a half hours from Santo Domingo, two or 15 minutes. We are, if you look at a map of the DR, I'm on the eastern side, like on the side by Puerto Rico, and there's a little peninsula. It sticks out like a little finger. And on that peninsula called Samana, it's a little town called Las Terrenas. And I found out about it because when I came here the first time, so the first time I came to the DR was in 2016 and I was a professor at a university. That was a job I got that website I told you about. I teach, I teach abroad thing. I took a job as a professor at a university just for the summer. And while I was here for the summer, I traveled to, I traveled to um, Puerto Plata and Cabarete and uh, Susua and I did the, the Punta Cana thing, spent a few nights there and um, all over the country, <laughs> excuse me. And I kept hearing about this place called Las Terenas, Las Terenas. Well, you have to go visit it. It's a blend of cultures and it just sounded great. And then when I was in Punta Cana, I met a guy there who was from this area and he's like, oh, you have to visit when you do you meet my family and the whole, you know, that whole thing. Uh -oh. So I came, you know, whatever. He, was, he was so brought you home. <laughs> so cool. No, 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 no. So no. How, he is a nice guy. meeting the Dominican family? <laughs> you know, that's, they, they went fast and they will try to get you fast. And I was like, well, thank you. No, thank you. But I did visit the, the town and it's beautiful here. And um, it's a beautiful beach town. I actually didn't like the DR when I came the first time because I thought it was dirty. And I was living in Santiago, which is inland. It's about an hour and a half from the North Coast. And, you know, there was no appeal there. It wasn't like a city that had a whole lot to do. So I was not in love with the country at first. When I got here to Las Arenas, so I was like, oh, okay, all right, this will work with the blue, blue sea and the beautiful sand and the slow vibe. So that's how I found this place out. Somebody asked you, do you know uh, Cerise, the YouTuber? I don't know her. I have, I know who she is. I've seen some of her uh, videos, but I haven't met her yet. In fact, someone told me a while ago, I think, no. Is that Cerise Fairfax, I think? Someone yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. One of my viewers wrote me, do you need to check her out? She's in the North Coast. But I haven't been up there for a long time, so I should message her. Maybe we can get together. Do you know her? No, I don't. I don't know her. I mean, I just see all her videos. And, yeah. Uh, anybody that follows the Sue, I mean, then they pretty much know who she is. She's like, she made videos like two, three a day. <laughs> wow. wow. So what do you like about defending her in public? How come you like Sue so much? <laughs> Uh well, it's just a black man paradise. It's just a yeah. vacation spot. I mean, you know, what most most attract me to it is the women. Uh, you know, the nightlife, uh, the food, beaches. I mean, it's everything wrapped up in one. It's tourist friendly. You know, um, but I mean, it's a good place. You know. So do you feel like the women for a single guy. Huh? For a single guy, yeah. If you're a married guy, you get a whole lot of trouble down here. You get a whole lot of trouble if you're married. But let me ask you this now. Do you think there's a difference in the way that Dominican women relate to men versus American women, American black women, I'll say? 
Well, I think the Dominican women are more um, like old school with it. You know, they they cater to the man a little more. But, uh, you know, I know guys that live in the Dominican Republic, and uh, I tell guys all the time, man, when you meet a Dominican woman, she's going to give you the world on the honeymoon. But, you know, over time, she's going to not be cooking all the time and not, you know, she, you know, a woman going to be a woman. A man going to be a man. So yeah. at the end of the day, nobody's perfect. Nobody's going to be your slave and just be cleaning up all day and, and cooking for you and putting out and yes, sir, and all that. It ain't like that, man. They got their issues like everybody else. You know, right. a lot of Dominican women are a little possessive, too, also. Ooh. So. Ooh. Very jealous, jealous, jealous. They will cut yeah. you. Let me tell you this real quick. Let me just tell you the story. I've heard, and I'm not trying to be involved in any of this craziness, but I've heard that if a woman finds out you're sleeping with her man, they have been known to walk up to another woman and throw acid in their face or cut their men, that kind of stuff. I was like, wow. So that's why I say be careful when you get involved with these people. Know what you're getting involved with because, yeah, they'll cook for you and they'll do all these great things. For a while, like you said, I mean, no one's going to do that forever. You have any relationship, you're going to have to cultivate. You're going to have to work at it. You have to do maintenance. <laughs> this is not like Candyland. You come and you find a woman and she's this perfect person forever. Neither is a man perfect forever, right? You have to work at it. But Dominican women and men can be very, very jealous. And so be careful. Be out there having fun. Yeah. I'm uh, Like I say, I'm not going to say all of them. Just... You know, some of them, you know, I don't want to be biased and shit, but. Right. But, uh, yeah, so, uh, hold on, somebody else had a, a question. All right, they saying, uh, <laughs> I didn't ask your girl it, it, the good questions. Okay, I mean, I didn't ask her certain questions. Uh, I'm sure you guys wanted to know. But uh, at the same time, I didn't want to offend her or nothing like that. And um, I'm not going to ask you certain questions. I mean, nah. you know, some stuff, like, I, mean, I don't want to ask you what? personal stuff. No, nah, well, I don't want to do it. You asked about dating or something like that. I said, yeah, I dated down here, yeah. Okay. <laughs> so now you're making me like, <laughs> like, bring it on. You want me to bring it on? I mean, sure I don't know. Don't know. <laughs> I'll say that you can ask me a question if I don't want to answer it. I can, I can handle it. So go ahead. What is it that you really want to know? <laughs> All right. So, um, oh uh, man, you got me on the spot now. I was supposed to be an interview with you, <laughs> but anyhow, <laughs> uh, you never answered the question about uh, did you like the Dominican men better or the American guys? Did you date? Oh, black guys in the States? I mean, I don't know. Yes, 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 I have. Specifically, um, or you, you was uh, kind of like open to any race? Yeah. Uh, mainly dead black men, yeah. Have I ever dated anybody else? Yeah, but mainly I date black men, just because that's who I'm around most of the time. Um, and I like brothers. I like the, the, the vibe. I like the swag. I like the whole thing. <laughs> hey, Date. No, I'm not trying to pay for a date. And that's not because I just, I'm a woman. I want to be treated like a woman, right? So you so, never had a Dominican guy like uh, try to finesse you like, hey, you know, uh, yo, you got to pay for this, you got to pay for that? Or do they come, did they ever come at you like you was a sugar mama? So I'll tell you this. So the guy I was dating, I never, ever, ever paid for anything with him. He paid for everything. Um, very kind, so he was, very a, he was a rich Dominican? They have rich Dominicans. Oh, he's not poor. I don't know that he's rich, but he has a job, and he, you know, I don't, I don't know all the particulars of his financial situation, but, but yeah, I never pay with anything when I'm when I'm with him. I never pay for anything when I'm with him. But however, I do have like I have a guy that I know who's really just a friend of mine, and he does some work for me sometimes. Like he'll, like I said, he might go to the store, bring me something back, whatever, and he has no problem saying, "Hey, can you loan me some money or whatever?" And I will. Because I know he doesn't really have it. We don't have a relationship like that. We're just cool. You know what I mean? I could probably ask him to do anything and he would do it. If I open the door and let him date me, yeah, he probably would. But I'm not opening that door. That's not the kind of relationship we have. And so, like, if I were to go out with a guy who didn't have a lot of money, we might go, like, let's say have a beer on the beach or something. 
I could easily pay for my own beer and I would not expect him to be paying for me. He might just to be like, you know, show me that he's the man kind of thing. But I'm not expecting for him to go in his pocket and pull out like the little bit of money he might have. I'm not talking, I'm not like unreasonable. So um, just depends upon who you are and depends upon the man to men with money often they're like, I got it. I want to, I want to do that. That makes them feel good. So fine. No problem. So, uh, okay, if you dated a Dominican guy, let's say uh, he, he really didn't make a lot of money and uh, maybe he didn't have a whole lot of education, but it was a great guy for you. You think long term that will work out for you? You always have like put up most of the finances. You think you can uh, handle that like long term? So what I look for mainly is character in a person, how they carry themselves, how they treat other people, of course, how he would treat me. Um, you know, is he like an honest person? Is he someone who just wants to sit around? Like if I'm the one who makes money, if I, if I happen to make more money than he does, is he just going to sit around and expect that I'm going to do everything? Or is he contributing in some other way, right? So I'm open to spending time with someone who may not make a lot of money, but brings value in other ways. Money's not the only thing that people have to offer. And so, um, yeah, long term, you're talking about like being married and having yeah. a whole like, relationship. Maybe, I don't know. You I mean, might have hard to pay for the wedding. <laughs> we can have a simple wedding on the beach. Doesn't have to be anything fancy, oh, right? Okay. So you, you, you okay. But I mean, but here's the thing I know I want to have a certain kind of lifestyle. I'm not talking about living in a big mansion or whatever, but um, I think if you really, really love somebody, you can find a way to make certain things work, you know? And, um, but I also think that if you are the kind of person who wants to, let's say, have, like, have a nice house, let's say three bedrooms, and you want to drive this kind of car, and you want to be able to go on vacation, or there's certain things that you want in your life, you're probably not going to be very attracted to people who can't also meet you in that same place. Like, for example, with a man, right? If you're, if you, let's say you're a man, you, you make X amount of dollars per year, $100,000 per year, let's say, and you meet a woman who may be beautiful, and maybe she cooks really well for you or something. But she doesn't hardly make, either she's not working at all or she makes like $30,000. Is that going to turn you off because she can't bring something equivalent to the table? Or would you look at her because she has other things to offer you? Well, as a man, you, you're so used to a woman like not making as much as you. Yeah. So naturally, men are supposed to be protectors and providers. So it's not as awkward as the other way around. I would probably be for you. I mean, you come from California, Atlanta. I mean, you know, you probably used to guys uh, probably doing a little more for you financially. Am I right? Oh no. I think a lot of guys who don't have money. Let me be clear. I don't. Oh really? Just, yeah, I don't. <laughs> you dated I'm some not like, <laughs> I don't know. I don't mean like that. That's not what I'm saying. What I'm talking about is I'm not looking. I know. Oh, I'm. I don't really know women personally. That's not true. I do know. I think of a couple of women I don't, I've known before. But we all say this. I know of women. We all know of women who are like, I won't date a man unless he makes this much money or unless he drives this kind of a car, or unless he can pay for everything, unless he can basically cash me out. There are women who aren't even interested in dating men like that. That's not where I'm coming from. That's not where I'm coming from. I've dated guys so like true love. Huh? I said, you just want some true love. I mean, isn't that the best thing, right? Why would I yeah, want to be yeah, with somebody? Yeah. yeah, I don't want, listen, I've had, I've had my opportunities for sure to date and marry men who had a whole lot of money, but I didn't love them. I didn't want to be with them like that, you know? And so just because you have money doesn't make me want to date. That's right. You got a question right here. Do I like American, Dominican, or Haitian men better in terms of dating? I have not dated any Haitian men, so I can't speak to that. Um, <clears throat> They're just different. I will say this about Dominican men. Um, they're very, they can be very attentive. They definitely want to treat a woman well. They want to, they compliment you. There's that kind of stuff. I find that in general, the relationships that I notice between Dominican men and Dominican women are much more like affectionate. They're just more willing to be like demonstrative and like, you know, kind of snuggle you. Sometimes I feel like American men will do that maybe behind closed doors, but they're kind of holding back a little bit. But I also think American black men have, have had so much burden put on them for so long. 
there's a little bit of a beat down quality. They can feel like they just have a lot of weight on their shoulders and that can transfer into relationships and make it difficult. But I've also dated some nice American men too. So I don't, say, I don't think I have a preference. I just want to be treated well, you know, taken care of. And I don't mean like money, 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 like I said, but you know, provided for, protected. I want to be, feel like someone loves me and cares about me. All right, would you, uh, let's say you met an American down there in the DR, would you would you consider dating him? Because I know a lot of these guys on here now, they looking at you like, yo, she a good woman. Ooh, man, I want to date her. Ooh, 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 would you still be open to American man or you? What? Yeah, I didn't move here because I only want to date Dominican men. I didn't move here to date Dominican men. I moved here because <laughs> I just wanted to live here. I, and who I date is just who I meet, right? But yeah, I, I don't rule anybody out. In that kind of way. I mean, I rule people out based upon if I'm not physically attracted to them, if I'm not attracted to them because of their vibe, like I said, their character. I don't want to date an asshole, excuse me, but you know, I don't want to date anybody who, you know, has certain qualities that I just don't feel attractive or attracted to. You know, nobody, if you're a liar, if you have some chronic character issues, then that's probably going to rule you out. For me, anyway. Uh, he asked me a question. Rich, would you marry a woman you have zero attraction to if she was hella rich and crazy about you? I wouldn't take it so far as marry her, but, you know, with me, man, I always try to keep it real with women. Like, you know, if I just want a woman for a certain thing, I just kind of pretty much tell her, that, you know, hey, we can go out, we can have fun, we can kick it. I'm not looking for a relationship. That's how I do it. So I wouldn't take it so far as marrying her. Now, she, if she came to me and said, hey, I want to give you a million dollars to marry you, and uh, <laughs> hey, <laughs> sign me up. <laughs> but I keep it on the up and up with her. She'll know what it is. I won't be lying. I won't play a role. I won't say, hey, baby, I love you. I want to marry you. It'll be arranged marriage. I mean, and it'll be on the up and up. So, I mean, that's that's the thing, man. Just, just tell these women what you want, and um, right. Don't, don't lie to them. Don't lie to them. Just, I mean, you might finesse them a little bit, you know. But don't, don't be sitting there telling a woman you love. She the only woman, and all that. And then she turn around and find out you messing around. But I, 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 I tell these guys all the time, man. A lot of guys, they really want a good woman. But they 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 don't trust women like you know because a lot of times it's the dirt they doing they sleep with a whole bunch of women and then they go oh man these women man they don't know. but what are you doing you know right. so if you doing a lot of dirt then yeah they might be doing some dirt so but I think you get what you give right that's what they say they say you get what you give whatever you're putting out even if it's just energy if you're putting out some negative stuff and you're like kind of not telling the whole truth, you're sneaking around. I'm not saying you have to tell every single part of your life to somebody, but if you know you're kind of, <laughs> if you know you kind of got some shady stuff going on, then probably you will have some shady stuff bounce back to you too. So thank you so much for subscribing. Wow, appreciate that. Thanks, thanks for subscribing, man. Y'all go to uh, her page, man. It's called Free Island Girl. Free Island Girl on YouTube. Just take a, um, a second out your day. Go over there and um, subscribe. It looks like you have 244 subscribers. I think you start off started. with you, you start off with 233, right? I started out with zero. What do you mean? I mean today. You had 230. Oh, yeah, I think so. I did, yeah. I just had right, got, trying to get there. We got 29 people in the chat right now. Everybody, wow. take a take a little time out and uh, just type in "free island girl." Somebody post. Well, dang, let me try to hold on. Let me post the link in the chat so they can just go right over there. Thank you so much. I'm trying to build my channel, I'm like a little, it, little engine that could. If y'all go over there and subscribe, comment on her videos. And maybe y'all can request her to do a certain video. Maybe she'll go. If y'all get her to a thousand exactly. subscribers, she can go live on the beach for y'all and do all this little stuff. Yep. And um, see some models, 
bikinis, you know, which ones what? you like, how you dump it. <laughs> <laughs> anything possible. Not anything, but you know, maybe. Yeah. Dollar Thank wheel you so subscribe. much. Thank you. All right, he already subscribed. Okay. Appreciate that, real brother. You got a real brother subscribed to you. I appreciate that. I really do. Thank you very much. Tony you Montana. Help each other, right? Huh? Thank you, Tony. That's what I'm saying. This is like relationships, right? Even online, it's like you help me, I help you. You know, you tell me what you want to hear about. I'm happy to try to talk about it. If I don't know, I find some other people. And so it's the same thing in the personal relationship, right? You, you're supposed to. It's called relationship. You're relating to each other. You help one another out. If there's a problem, you got to work through that stuff. So that's what I try to tell people. Uh, you at 248 now. We need to get you to 258. Come on, guys. Awesome. You got, got a bunch of wonderful male viewers. I love it. I love all this male energy. Thank you. Thank you, man. Mwah. Love it. Yeah, y'all can see her on the beach on her page. She's <laughs> dancing over there. <laughs> she turn, she's turning up. <laughs> <laughs> she's she has a much better channel than Cerise. If y'all over there support Cerise, y'all need to support her. <laughs> oh my goodness. Well, I will say this: my channel is new, relatively, and then I, like I'm not, I don't have any professional anybody helping me out, and so bear with me sometimes. But I'm working on it, you guys. I'm working on it. And I really would like to offer you something that you want to know about, whether it's the DR or, you know, talk about relationships or, I don't know. Okay. All right. Uh, but thank you. That's got another, really do. Sub, another sub right here. Appreciate you. Thank you, guys. So you have a bunch of men on your channel, huh? I'm going to come hang out at your channel. I love hey, all these hey. men. Wonderful. I love yeah, it. Two, all right. You're at 250 right now. Man, if we can get you to 260. <laughs> Fellas, throw her in the WhatsApp groups. Throw her, make, oh my help her out, man. She's an expat living alone over there in the DR. She just need to get to a thousand subscribers. I need you, brothers. Let me tell you this. I need you, brothers, looking out for me from afar, even so that you know what's going on. You know I'm here. You tell people, hey, if you go to the DR, check her out. I'm a sister from the States. And so I, I'm serious. I appreciate the love. I really do because there's some days. I did a video today. I don't think it's uploaded yet. Did a video today where I said, sometimes it's really hard. I have days where I will break down and cry because I'm like, how am I going to get this together? How am I going to figure it out? Like when you asked me earlier about, are there challenges to moving abroad? There definitely are. And as a single woman, it can be hard sometimes having to figure out every single thing, you know, manage all of that kind of stuff. And so I appreciate, even though it's not like you guys are here in person doing something for me, truly and honestly, the energy you send me, like this positivity, it really helps me. It really does. So I thank you from the bottom of my heart. I appreciate it very much. And I want to try to give back to you guys by offering you whatever it is that you might be interested in knowing about down here. I'm happy to respond to your questions. So thank you. Have you been to Sasua yet? I was in Sasua. Actually, so I passed through Sasua. Not this year. I think it might have been last year. I was in, so it's like Puerto Plata. Sasua is in the middle of Cabarete. I spent a couple nights in Cabarete, and then I've been, uh, spent a night or two. Oh, hold on, hold on, When you was in Cabarete, I know the men was hitting on you down there. They was getting <laughs> nasty. <nice. laughs> so I, I, I'll just say, I mean, I, I attract attention. I do. I have, thank you so much for subscribing again. Um, you know, I don't, I don't have any issue, like, attracting male attention. I like men. I feel like I'm pretty friendly. You know, but I also realize that I, people recognize I have a boundary. They know that I'm not a certain kind of woman. And so, yeah, what I did see in, in a Cabarete, though, was I think I saw the, the sex trade going on, sex tourism. You know, you know, you brothers like to go up there and get this. You know what's up. I know what you do down there. Hey, and I'm not mad at I'm you. I'm a single guy. Hey, hey I go on I'm vacation like every three, four months. But it's not always no. just a sewer now. So, see. No, it's not, it's hey. not only the sewer. The sewer is known for that. But it's not only Sasua. And here's the thing. I'm not mad at you guys. Thank you for your subscription. I appreciate it. I, I know why brothers go down there. Just like with Brazil and everything. And um, That ain't the only reason. I uh, all brothers don't go down there for that. Don't put us all in. The <laughs> okay. It's so okay. good. Well, Raise just your hand. Sewer. Raise your we hand. We talking about the DR. We talking about the whole DR? 
Because you got brothers that just go down there on vacation. You got guys that take their family. I mean, you know, most yeah. guys, you know, they going to have fun. <laughs> I mean, you don't even have to leave the United States. You can do that at home. I'm just saying a lot of guys, I'm not saying every man, I'm not saying every situation, but a lot of people come down here because they want to appreciate the natural beauty of the island and not just the, the beaches and the trees and the pina coladas. It's also the people, whether you're a woman or a man, it's not hard to find that here. That's part of what's offered. These people are poor and they're beautiful. And so what do they have to offer? Their beauty, right? They're beautiful. Women are curvaceous. They love big butts down here. Men are not mad at you if you have curves. They prefer that. Right. And a lot of women in the U.S. are brainwashed. They, oh, no, I got to lose this and lose this. It's like, no, 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 no. Keep all that. And so it's easy to find women who are, you know, dressed the way that men like. It's hot down here. You know, we don't wear a whole lot of clothes because it's too hot. And so it's a playground in that kind of way. But also, um, lost my train of thought talking all this woman. So, oh, I was saying I'm not mad at you guys for doing that because, like, in terms of dating in the U.S., you might have to take a woman out three times, four times, five times, buying all these dinners, spending all this money, hoping that you're going to get to have sex with her one day. Whereas down here, not every woman is going to have sex right away, but you're not going to have to spend as much money. And they know that a lot of you guys are just coming down on vacation. So it's a limited amount of time. They want what you have, which is some of your dollars. You want what they have, which is their bodies, basically a good night or two with them to be treated well. And so it works. I, I get it. I don't feel like it's a big problem. My thing is this. If you're going to do it, treat the women well. Don't be cheap. Don't be nasty. Don't be abusive. Right? These are women just like you have mothers and sisters and all that stuff. So just be respectful of them. Enjoy your time. Enjoy whatever you do. Two adults decide to do, that's their business. But I just say do it with some respect. That's right. Whatever you do, yeah. do it with respect, man. You know? Uh, uh, shout out to Bishop Don Juan, man. He said, no matter what he do, he bring God with him. <laughs> there you go. There you go. God's not against sex, right? God created all that stuff. You know who Bishop Don Juan like, is? <laughs> <laughs> huh? What'd you say? Do you know who Bishop Don Juan is? <laughs> no. You Google Did him. I know Just Google him later. Bishop Don Juan. Okay. Oh, gosh. I don't know. Bishop and Don Juan are the same name. I might be worried about that. I don't know. His famous quote is, uh, uh, green for the money, gold for the honey. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Uh, you got a little question. Um, he's asking, what, what do we pay for a month in paradise? Well, I mean, like, how much is your place a month? I pay $600 a month, and I have a whole big house. So you can pay that. It depends. First of all, it depends on where you live. It depends on how you live. If you want, like, all the fancy bells and whistles and, like, granite countertops and all that kind of stuff, then, you know, you go pay more money. If you're comfortable having, like, a one-bedroom apartment and doesn't have to have all super fancy fancy but it's comfortable, you might pay 300 bucks a month, you know? The closer to you are to the beach, usually it's more expensive. I don't live right on the water. I, it takes me maybe to drive, like, maybe five minutes, seven minutes to get to the beach. But I like where I live because one thing, the beaches tend to be crowded with, with tourists all the time. You know, when you come visit, it can be noisy. There, often mosquitoes are more um, at the beach because there's a lot more water. So just, you know, you have to decide what you want. If you just want to come down and hang out for a minute and like absorb the beauty and get some love and not have to pay a lot of money, get yourself a one bedroom partner for like 300 bucks and have a good time. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's. Pretty much, like you said, how you want to live out there, you know? <clears throat> Anything closer to the beach is going to be higher. So, I mean, it's got to get that USD coming in, you know? Yeah, uh, that's the key. That is the key, trying to get you. And I realized that when I was here the first time. I had a job here, which paid me okay for the DR, but it wasn't. I wasn't making a lot of money. And like I said, now I have work that I do from, the, from, from, from California, from the States, but it's not regular. And so I, that's why I teach English on the side. I don't make a lot of money, but you know, it helps me keep going. So I don't pay a lot of rent. I try to keep my expenses low. And yeah, I'm glad you guys feel like I understand men. That's great. I love men. All <laughs> I right, like so, huh? so if you was dating in America, right? And your mm -hmm. guy said, hey baby, uh, I'm taking the fella trips. I'm taking a trip with the fellas to uh, DR. What would right. be your reaction? <laughs> my reaction is go, no, straight up. My reaction is go have a great time. Don't lose your mind. Don't bring anything home. 
Don't do anything you wouldn't want me to do. But have so fun. You, so you give him a green light to uh, I didn't say ahead. that. I didn't say that. I understand what it is, right? I'll tell you this. Before he leaves home, he's going to be real happy. I'm not going to send him out the door mad. You're going you're gonna to wear him out before he leaves. <laughs> and I'm going to make sure. Well, here's the thing. I like to look good. I know that men appreciate women who look good, women who take care of them. And so when I'm in a relationship, I feel like I'm pretty accommodating to my man. I like to take care of them. I don't mean like, you know, kissing your feet, obviously, but I want a man to be happy because if a man is happy, he's going to try to make me happy. And then it works for everybody. And so no, I'm not going to be freaked out. Like, oh my God, you can't go. Or I have to go with you. Or that's, there's no trust in that relationship. That's not going to be much fun. So I'm like, yeah, go have fun. But the point is, I don't think a man I would date is going to be leaving home feeling bad before he goes because I'm going to make sure as much as I can that our relationship is solid. So he's not going out there like, I got to go find a Jamaican woman. He might, but he'd be like, yeah, my woman at home looks just as good and I'm just as happy with her. Does that mean that he's not going to do anything? You know, you never know. But he probably is not going to lose his mind. And so that's the best you can hope for, right? I mean, you're not going to be with your partner all the time anyway. You never, ever, ever know what someone's doing every minute of the day. So as long as you feel like you have a solid base of trust and you have a good relationship in other ways, you, know, you have good communication, you have good sex, you guys do things that are nice to each other, you do little sweet things for each other sometimes. I feel that's like a that's good pretty question. good. That's a good question right here. What's the question? What the, What does... She know about men that she didn't know when she was young. Oh my gosh! I mean, you know how it is. If I if I could go back, you know, to when I was twenty five or something, and use the knowledge I have now, I mean, I know um, men want to be respected, right? Men don't want to be pressed into like have their hand pressed to, to make a move, whether it's in terms of a relationship or like, hey, hey, I want to live in this town. Let's go. There's ways to get a man to. To, to do things that you want them to do without that pressure. That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> feminine energy. Right? Am I wrong? Please hey, tell me if I'm I wrong. Think I somebody to... did a show on that. And uh, they said that women are like the world's best like manipulators. They can make a... so many wars have started over a woman and the power you guys have. <laughs> what do you think about that? You think you guys got a lot of power? <laughs> we do. We definitely do. And but be clear, I'm not talking about like manipulating in a negative way because I don't believe in, I don't want anybody to manipulate me. I don't want to be lied to. I don't want to be like someone going behind my back trying to do things. I don't mean it in that way. But I mean, if you know how to use your feminine energy, that that's going to draw a man to you. And when he comes to you, then you can kind of direct him to like, well. You know, I didn't really feel like you want to go out and have Italian food tonight. Like, okay, but I'm not really feeling like that's going to satisfy me. I'd much rather have Chinese food. Are you, how, what do you think about that? And let him decide. <laughs> He's like, I can't like have to have. I mean, seriously, now you might have to have Italian food that night, but chances are next time he's going to give you what you want. Or if he's like, all right, babe, well, let me, I don't want you to be uncomfortable. You know, there's just ways to kind of talk to a man that is softer without having to have everything be like combative. I don't feel like that works with men. And I wish I had known some of this earlier. I did not know all this stuff when I was younger, especially because, you know, being someone who works with my brain a lot, I analyze, I tend to overthink. And I realized I had a man tell me, I wasn't dating him, but a man I knew a long time ago um, told me, you know, when you come home, you put that career thing aside and then you deal with your man from the heart in a different place. And it's true. It's true. It makes all the difference. Men don't want to talk about, you know, work and hard stuff all the time. They want a soft place to come. <laughs> right? Right. I dated a girl like that, man. They they always brought their job home. Oh, man, they treated me like that. Oh, no. I'm like, man, come on, man. I and I don't mean to <laughs> But a shout out to Gil. Let me give Sorry? a shout out real quick. Shout out to Gil, man. Appreciate the super chat. Appreciate everybody in here that's supporting the channel. Um, appreciate y'all subscribing to her page. We're at 256 now. We can get that to 260, man. That'll be amazing. So uh, tell a friend, tell a friend, subscribe to her page. Uh, so <clears throat> I got to step out for just a second. So okay. tell them, tell them 
why do they need to subscribe to your page and what's the like best video you have and um just top it up real quick i gotta use the bathroom okay <laughs> I feel it. it's just me and you now so here's the real truth my page is called free island girl because i do feel like there's a freedom i have here that i didn't have at home i don't feel burdened by a lot of stress i don't feel burdened by a lot of financial concerns like i said i don't make a lot of money here but i don't feel like money is the most important thing what i feel like is that what's most important to me is to be happy and to be able to share the love i feel inside with other people and to receive that back from them and so I talk a lot about that on my channel. I talk a lot about, my channel really is about why I decided to come to the Dominican Republic, what it was like for me as a single woman with a child to move here. I talk about some of the challenges. I talk about some of the wonderful things that have happened. Um, today I did a video, um, again, I don't know if it's uploaded yet, but I did a video about some of the challenges in terms of, you know, when things don't work out and how hard that can be. Um, I've done videos on dating in the DR, what that's like for men and for women from what I've learned here. Um, I've talked about investing in the DR. If you have an interest in coming to live here or to purchase property, whether you live here full time or like a lot of people come and spend just a few months a year, then maybe they rent their place or they just they come in the winter and they go back home. You know, you want a place to get away, a little spot for just for you when you need to get away and just clear your head, not have to worry about the stresses. That's possible. And one of the things that I will be offering is a service where I can provide a package. For example, if you want to come down here and you want to know, well, like you asked me, what's, what's the best, what's the way to get health insurance? How much does it cost to get an apartment? What's healthcare like? Um, what, what do I need to do to get a driver's license? What is it like to date a woman, you know, um, Dominican woman? Those kinds of things. I'm happy to put those packages together for individuals. Or if you're coming with a family, everyone's not single. Sometimes you want to bring your family with you. I can share information about like schools and things like that. So be happy for you to go at least check out my channel. And if you like what you see, then why not subscribe? Okay. Word. Thank you so much for having me here today. And I really, again, appreciate all of you guys for watching. For those who've already subscribed, mwah, huge kiss to you. For those who haven't, what do I have to do? What do you need to know? Okay. <laughs> I really hey, we need, we need you to talk to the sisters in America and get them right for us. <laughs> I think a lot of women just don't know that it's easy. It's easier to get a man than you think. It doesn't have to be a battle. Plus, I think a lot of sisters spend a lot of time talking about how bad men are and that there aren't any men. I'm like, there's men everywhere. There's, they're falling off the trees. There are men everywhere. But what are you looking for and why? If you're just looking for a man to pay your bills, like, how would that feel if someone was just looking for you to have sex with? Like, you don't want that from a man. So, look at a man as more than just a, a meal ticket. Right. Look at a man for like who he really is. What is a man offering you? Ooh, he's offering you some love. He's going to protect you. He's going to make sure you feel safe. Doesn't that turn you on? Is that not better than the dinner? Right. Like a I lot feel of like women, uh -huh. a lot of women, they seem like they, they look for uh, the bad guy type or they look for guys that's kind of like on the edge. And, I mean, it's just crazy how they think guys in america i mean so, i don't know I, I think that maybe that sounds like women who are younger who haven't had a lot of experience who are still out there like you said chasing the bad boys or who maybe haven't determined their own worth a lot of women don't know how valuable they are just at just for being women you know it's not about your paycheck it's not about how beautiful you are it's about the own power that we you know men you bring a certain kind of a power right with you without having to have you know, this kind of education or this kind of job or make this much money. It's not about that, but it's, you naturally have a male energy that you bring. And women have the same thing with feminine energy. And if women can get more in touch with that and realize how powerful that is, not in like an aggressive way, but there's a huge strength and softness in being warm and allowing that to like create a flow for you. And then a lot of amazing things can happen. I see a question right. about raising a child. Yeah. Go ahead. The question about raising my child, I love it. My son is doing great here. Um, he's nine years old. And one of the things that happened that really made me want to move even more was that a few years back, like remember the Trayvon Martin killing and um, a lot of these young black boys were getting killed. And my son was becoming aware of that because it was all over the news. People were talking about it at school. And he was asking me, why are they shooting black boys? Why are they killing black people in this country? And, you know, like, what's the answer to that? Right? How do you, what do you tell a child when they ask you that question? And I didn't want my son growing up with that in the background of his mind. I didn't want him growing up thinking about 
is someone going to shoot me or, or do they hate me because I'm black? I just wanted him to be able to be free. You know, go climb a tree, go throw a baseball, you know, ask questions about whatever, what kids normally do, what, what most of us did when we were kids. You go outside, you ride your bike, you play, you get in trouble, you know, you do kid stuff. That's what I wanted. And so switching down here was wonderful for that. Um, the educational system is different here. He's in a private school here, so he's learning in a different way. But I feel like what he's getting is fantastic. I could not teach him some of the things that he's learning here just by like opening up a book and learning about the next public and pointing to pictures. There's no comparison to actually being here and learning how to get along with Dominican kids. He was nervous to go play baseball. He did not want to play. Yeah, I'll tell you this. He cried the first time. I took him. He's like, I don't want to play. I don't want to play. <laughs> yeah, he'd be mad if I said this online if he knew. But he did. He cried because he was, I think really he was just afraid. Even though he looks like a Dominican boy and he speaks Spanish, he doesn't speak Spanish like a Dominican. And I think he was yeah. But I was like, I told him, I said, you have to go. I had to get hard. Like, you have to go. And the coach kind of looked at me like, you need to go. You know, because the mom being there could be that soft place still. And I was like, nope. So I just left him. I was like, you'd be all right. He's like, I can't believe you're going to do this to me. And I tell you the next day, he was like, it was great. I said, okay. So it's wonderful. And now he gets to be free and, and not have to think about, not be burdened by that stuff a lot of black men and boys are burdened at home. Uh, you got a question. Uh, what date? <laughs> My dating age limit? Uh, you got to be legal. I'll put it that way. All right. <laughs> <laughs> I like men. <laughs> uh, not too old, not too young. I don't know. I don't have a particular so, like so, range. I don't, so maybe I don't in between, uh, in Good between question. eight, eighteen and uh, eighteen and a half. <laughs> I'm, I'm not interested in boys. I'm not interested in boys. Um, you, yeah, say I mean, why I like you say why you're single then? I agree. That's a that's a great question. That's a great question. You need to ask the men that, right? Like, what's up? I'm sitting here. I'm available. <laughs> I don't know. It's a good question. Part of it, I think, is that, like I said, a lot of the men here um, marry very early. And so finding a single, like a truly single man here is a little bit tricky. But give me some time. We'll check back in a year and you know, I'll let you see what's happening. Whether he's Dominican or American or, I don't know, Turkish or French or Brazilian. I, we'll see. Uh, <laughs> exactly. I'm happy you doing yard work, but you're going to like it though. And when you come in from doing that yard work, I'm going to reward you. I'm going to make you feel good for having done it. See? All right. That's what's up. It goes both <laughs> ways. <laughs> All right. I mean, you can answer this briefly. Uh, I know you already answered it before, but. The, the question about the locals? Yeah. That one? Uh, very well. Very well. Um, most people are very, very friendly to me, very respectful of me. Um, so the way that men a lot of times let women know that they like them here is that they do they kind of hiss at them. And a lot of women I found, white, black, whoever, get offended, like, oh, what is that? And I'm like, no, 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 no. It's not, they're not being rude. They're not being like overly frisky or whatever. That's just what they do here. And so, oh, they or they'd be like, oh, like, like, yeah. Okay. Yeah. They'll do that. Or they'll just say something like, ooh, but I'm really tall, right? So they're like, I guess they can have a little They talk about, like, my body. They'll mention, they're not, like, overly talking about my body parts. But they're saying, for example, they might say, I think you have a beautiful body or you're a beautiful woman, that kind of thing. And they'll just say it as I'm walking down the street. And there's, so the way they do it here is different because, number one, it's just part of the culture. And they're not, like, reaching out, touching me. They're not going too far. Whereas, this is to, to answer the question about men in the, in the United States, sometimes men will go too far. You never touch a woman unless she's invited you to touch her, unless you for sure know it's okay, right? So, um, but generally speaking, I find men to be very respectful. The women too, women are warm, friendly. Um, have I had someone try to take advantage of me, like financially? Yes, I have. I've had people overcharge me for stuff because they know I'm not Dominican. That will happen. That will happen anywhere. That happens right in the United States. But check it out. That guy, he was someone who I had to come here, come to my house to hang some pictures and do some like little chores around the house. He's never getting called back again because you get one shot at that. And if I know you're going to take advantage, then yeah, I paid him, but he'll never get called back here. And so that's part of the issue with some of the mentality here because a lot of people aren't very well educated. And so instead of thinking long term, like, well, if I do a good job, and I just take what the real price is. She'll call me again and again and again, and I'll get paid more. This person was like, let me get everything I can get right now. 
and he did, but that was it. Yeah, that that seems to be the mentality of uh, a lot of Dominicans. Uh, like you know, <clears throat> they try to, um, like you say, take advantage instead of building a relationship. And where you you always gonna need a handyman around there. So if he would have just done the right thing, he would always have a source of you know income. You know, exactly. plus you probably know some expats coming in the area. And I'll see him every now and then, like, you know, to pass by him in town or whatever. I wave, like, hey. But I, you know, I'll be friendly, but I'm not calling him again. That's for sure. But generally, to answer the question again, the people are really nice. Um, they know I'm not from here, but they treat me well. You know what it is? It's just, like, how you treat people is typically how people are going to treat you. There's always the, the bad apple who's going to do something wrong. But for the most part, people are cool. All right. We got you up to, uh, I'm looking at it now, it's 257. It's 38 oh. people in here. Y'all go to the channel, man. Let's get this to 160, man. I mean, 260. 260. We need three more subscribers. Um, Only three. Yeah, we're, we're about to end the show because I know you got stuff to do. And uh, I got another show, y'all. Stay tuned at 6 o'clock for uh, Big J Escape to Dominican Republic. We're gonna chop it up with Jay. I think he's uh in Santo Domingo right now. You know, so uh, any last questions y'all wanna y'all wanna say to Miss Kelly? Um y'all go ahead and spit it out. Any last words you wanna say to the guys? Um, well, I thank you for watching. I thank you for subscribing. I appreciate your support, any kind of support, even if you just are thinking, wow, I hope she makes it. I appreciate that. And um Please do spread the word. Um, as I said, anything you want to know about the Dominican Republic or my experiences down here, I'm happy to share those. Um, best way to do it is to look at my page, subscribe, and ask questions. And I'm happy to answer them. But I really appreciate the time here today. It's nice to be able to connect with people back home. So thank you. All right. There's somebody that said you're 6'2". I am 6'2". <laughs> You must know who I am. I am 6'2". I'm really tall. And that could be in terms of the person who asked me why I'm, why I'm still single. That could be part of it. Because, you know, a lot of men, Dominican men are not that tall, typically. <clears throat> the guy I was dating is not quite my height, but close enough. And so I think sometimes that can be intimidating for a man, right? And so that could be part of it. And that's another reason I try to really be a little bit softer, because I think that can make men a little bit nervous. So I don't know. You guys, what do you think? Would you date a woman who's taller than you? <laughs> I mean, I have personally, but it does feel kind of awkward, though. <laughs> like, <laughs> baby, you cook today? <laughs> Hell I think no. That has a lot to do with it. <laughs> yeah, I think so. But I I, mean, I appreciate I can't you coming on. Man, I, I would love to have you back on. And oh. uh, if you want to go live one day, uh, you know, if you're on the beach or something, you got a nice scenery you want to show us. And these guys, you. they they want you to hook them up with a local, find them a good local, so they won't have. Uh, you have to be good though. You got to behave. You got to treat them well, right? Treat them like you want to be treated. Here's the yeah. thing, though, real quick about going live. YouTube now has a policy where unless you have a thousand subscribers, you can't live stream anymore. Because I used to do live streams, but I can't anymore because I'm only at oh. two. Is that right? So I got to get a whole lot more subscribers before I can live stream again. I don't know so why they did that. Your internet is pretty good on your phone around the country or what? It's pretty good. It's pretty good. I bought a modem, this little thing here, like a hotspot. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I take it with me a lot of times wherever I go. Um, I bought more power on mine so that I don't have issues with, like, dropping when I well when I was streaming. Um, but there's lots of restaurants in town, places like that, where you can go and they have Wi-Fi. Just like at home, you can go and, like, log on to theirs, and it's fine. So for the most part, I don't have any issues. Um, you know, every now and then you have like a little outage or maybe even like power will go out sometimes, but it might be like five minutes. It comes right back on. So not a problem. Oh, OK. All right. Um, yeah, these guys in here, they I'm telling you, they 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 want a woman, a good woman like you, man. So you already oh, gone to DR. Sorry. So y'all have to see her in the <laughs> DR. Y'all go to her channel. I think you had 262 now. 61. Wow! Oh my gosh, you guys! Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank. You. I really appreciate that, and I appreciate the feedback in terms of me as a woman. I really do. 
that makes me feel really good inside because I want to know that I'm going down the right path because I don't want to be single forever. I don't want to be a girlfriend forever. I want to be a wife. And so That's what? I want to know. I do. I mean, I'm, I don't hide it. I'm, and that doesn't mean I like, geez, I want to be your wife. I'm not talking about that. But I know for me what would feel good. And so if I'm getting feedback from you right here saying, oh, she's, oh, she's getting warmer, she's getting warmer, you're going in the right direction. That really helps me. And so that's why I'm saying I appreciate your support, even if it's not financial support or subscribing. I'm open to that, of course, but I really do appreciate um, all the feedback. So thank you again for this. And I thank you for the opportunity, Richie. It really is wonderful to do this with you. All right. I appreciate having you on. Like I say, uh, hopefully we can get you back on another day and uh, we could connect on this site on your phone. Like, if, you know, you want to go live one day, we, we still could do it on my channel. Oh. Actually, that'd be wonderful. I'd love to. I'll take you to some beautiful spots and show you like waterfalls and beaches and whatever it is, or just what, what's happening in town about dancing. It's kind of noisy, but um, you can do all those kinds of things. You, let, you guys let him know what you want to see, and we can make it happen. How about that? All right, these guys, I'm going to tell you now, since they subscribe to your page, they want you to put out a video for the fellas. They want to see how the ladies looking down there. In that area right. you in. So can you okay. promise them you can do a video within the uh, next week or two? Yes, I can. Absolutely. Uh, one for the fellas. I'm going to call it. This one's for the fellas. So you'll know. Yeah, you'll see. I love it. One for the fellas. One for the fellas. Wow. <laughs> Back home. <Yeah. laughs> okay. Shout out, shout out to Brian Bourne. I see you in there last minute. Just stepping in. Good show. Uh, good topic. Six, my dude. Appreciate, appreciate you, Brian Bourne. Make sure y'all subscribe. So uh, Kelly's page, I just put the link up. Intelligent you, Black Queen. Thank you so much. Uh, appreciate you coming on. Uh, so we'll talk to you later. And, okay. Uh, adios. Have a good night. Bye, guys. Mwah. Hey, stay tuned. I got Big J coming up, fellas. Stay tuned. Uh, it's probably going to take me about um, 15 minutes to get back on. So uh, stay tuned. I got Big J coming up, and we're going to chop it up. He's in Santo Domingo. Peace.